go. Okay, that's about uh, all I need. Uh, hold on. I'm, uh, go ahead. Still in in frame? Yeah. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. And we're recording, so go ahead. Okay. So this is the next day after the frets have been uh, pressed into the neck. You can see along here, uh, there's a, a little remnant of the glue that we use when we put the frets in. We we put glue in the fret slots, and uh, these fret ends were cut off with a nipper and they're very rough and sharp right now. I'm going to just flip this neck over and I've already worked on this side of the neck a little bit and you can see a difference in, how does that look? Yeah. Uh, you can see a little difference in the way the frets look I, and there's still some glue on there, it hasn't come off yet, but you can see a bit of an angle cut like this on these frets as opposed to the other side that are straight up and they're really protruding out of the neck. If you were not careful, you could cut your fingers on the edges of these frets. These are starting to come down into the edge of the of the fingerboard and uh, these still need some more uh, work to take down. So I'm going to move this back over to my my vise that holds this and okay, I'm going to work on... Now. I'm going I'm to cut okay. a little bit and uh, let me uh, reset. Okay, so uh, I'm back in my vise, ho holding my my neck uh, my neck jig. This this jig that's sitting right here that the neck is on uh, is uh, a holding apparatus. That wait a minute, let's start. Let's do this. This is going right towards the camera. Okay. Yeah. All right. So and uh, I'm gonna restart. No. Put them on the table behind you. Okay. Okay, so this this uh, neck jig that is that the neck is sitting on here is is a is a tool that we use in the shop uh, for all types of uh, uh, neck work. When I'm refretting uh, instruments or when I'm doing the fret work on our our guitars, and this jig allows me to attach the neck at this end, and then you can see the neck moving here. And this, this can simulate the string tension pulling. Watch what I do here. See the neck moving as I tighten this up underneath? So I can simulate, uh, for example, right now there's no tension on this. So this neck is sitting uh, just as is. It's, it's really attached here and it's floating out here. Now I can come here and with just a little bit of movement I can simulate, that's probably something like, 10,000 strings pushing on the pulling on the neck and if I come back in here and go up a little higher maybe that's like 11,000 so I, I can simulate I, it's you know tons of uh, uh, intuitive work that I do you know uh, uh, now I'm going to I'm going to dress the edges of these frets down just these were fresh frets that were put in cut off now I'm taking them down and you know you'll see tools that We'll hold the angle at a, the the file at a certain angle and all that, but you know I've done too many fret jobs in my life that I, I do it by feel. It's all by feel for me. I don't even have to look at this to know what I'm doing. But you, there's a lot more metal to take down at this end because there's more frets at this end. So I got to work a little bit more up here, and then I can come along and and work these down. I'll just put my hand across this so I don't come up here and bump the headstock. And, uh, and and I'm looking for a certain feel that I'll get. And now I can bring this back this way where it's, 
it's perpendicular to the center of the fingerboard, the file is, and I can feel that there's still a little bit of metal fret end sticking out. So I'll I'll take that down till I feel like I've gotten I've gotten down to the wood. And there's there's finish on this neck. So I, I go very lightly. But now we've got we've got you hear the different hear that? As opposed to that, hear this? I'm on the wood. So, but there's, remember, there's more metal up here because there's so many more frets. So I have to spend a little more time up at this end because I'm filing a lot more metal off of up here. And then when, when, I've, when I get it feeling a certain way, I come down and I sight the neck to make sure that it's a nice straight run. And I need to take these down at this end still a little bit. Probably working at about a 30 degree angle here. All right, let's just cut right there. I'm I'm doing about a 30 degree angle here, and uh, along the edge of the fingerboard now, the only thing I'm really feeling is maybe, and I'm I'm knocking it off with my fingernail, is just a little bit of glue residual that's still on here a little bit. Can I just, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, so I'm working at 30 degree angle and, and I'm, I'm feeling the neck and, and you know, you can see I'm not even looking at it, I'm feeling it. It's all feel to me. And so, uh, you know, this is feeling like I've got it pretty good. So I'm gonna sight the neck right, right now and it looks really straight, maybe a little bit off up here. And when I'm on the metal, you can hear it. When I roll it down this way, I've gotten enough of the metal away, it's quiet. And I'm barely touching a little bit of metal in here. Do so, the sound thing. Yeah, well, you know, when I, when I go perpendicular to the center of the fingerboard, so in other words, if this file is tucked up to this perpendicular edge to the fingerboard. Here I can do this and you're not hearing it hit any metal. Now on this side I haven't cut these frets down. Listen to this. I can't even move the file but okay that's perpendicular. Th those frets are sticking way out. This I've taken it down. Listen. It's just sliding on the wood. Here <laughs> heavy metal. Okay and then this is a this is a little file that I use that is a super fine. I mean, this feels like silk. This file feels like silk right here, and uh, it's a file that I come in with after I've taken those frets down, and I come in, and this is a. You can hear it cutting when I'm running this way. That file's cutting when I'm going this way, and listen here. It's just sliding across. So here's my cut. So I'm uh, now when you get a good, real clean cut with this type of a file. I think this is a double ot, an ot or a double ot. Very, very fine file. Like I said, it feels like a pe when you run your fingers on it, it feels like a piece of silk. You know, uh, the edges of these frets are they have no scratches in them. They're just as clean and nice as can be. You know. I don't know of anybody that uses these files except me. Anyway, so that edge of that fingerboard now is uh, is trimmed down for the, the, the frets are trimmed down now. So what I'm going to do, I like to work with my right hand on the opposite side of the fingerboard from where I'm standing. So I'm just going to take this and sorry, it's all right, and turn my neck around. And now I'm going to work over here. And uh, and cut these frets away. Are we still filming? Yep. Okay. So you can hear I'm going I'm going at a like a perpendicular to the to the center of the fingerboard again now, like parallel to this edge of the neck up here, the heel end. And I'm just going to take down these 
these frets until I I can feel that I've gotten into the wood a little bit but I don't want to I don't want to file the wood so again you know you see I'm not looking I'm feeling so I'll feel I do a fret dress that way I don't even look at the neck when I do a fret dress I feel the frets you know And when I'm when I'm doing this, I can. Uh, we've got my light turned a little different than where I would normally work, but there is uh, there is a little bit of a reveal when I've got the the file on this angle. There's a little bit of a reveal where I can literally see between the edge of the neck and the file because it hasn't come down to the wood yet. So I, I'm I'm you know I can see that I can see that I'm not all the way down yet what would you call this process right now uh... this is just cleaning up the edges of the frets really okay. from from the uh, right after the fret job, after the frets have been nipped off, yeah. so Seems we're now like the initial fret. Dress. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's part of fret dressing. I mean, I'm so dressing like the, the first stage. Yeah, I'm dressing the ends of the frets. So uh, fret yeah. dressing stage now, one. Now, now you got, you've got a, you got a radius of the fingerboard going like this. You've got a curved fret that's curved like this, and many people that teach fret work, and that do fret work come in and they touch with files this this angled edge that's round on the fret that edge of that fret if you think about it if it's on an angle like this and it's round as soon as you touch that edge of the fret you're cutting away metal and you're eventually exposing an edge that you can get under with a terry cloth towel when you're wiping your guitar down or something like that I never touch those fret edges. I leave them. I leave a nice, clean, and then they get they get. Uh, when I use my fretting uh, crowning fret, uh, file, which is, you know, this is a 300 grit diamond file. I go over the edge of the fret like that, and I just round those edges ever so slightly. And that's it. it once it's done, once you've done all this fret work over here. I can't feel that fret now. It's as simple as that, you know. And that's what I want. I I don't want anybody to feel the frets like a big bump. I want it to feel like it's a neck you've been playing for years, you know. But uh, but a lot of this stuff can be overdone and overthought, I I believe. And if you just yeah, now I've got that. I was feeling the glue. So, I'm so let's shoot an ending. That's what. Start, start, start again. I'm sorry. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm just running a few final passes. I've cut the frets down. You can hear it's quiet. There's a little metal there, so I'll work that a tiny bit. I'm rolling my hand like this. Here, I'm on the wood. Here, wood, metal. I'm finding that little spot where, there, where the edge of the metal comes out of the edge of the fingerboard. And that's, you know, these frets are, for this stage, I'm done with this bit of the fret leveling. I mean, the fret... Uh, the first fret dressing. Okay, so let's, uh, okay, let's, and I'm going to tilt up from the guitar, okay. and you're going to just say, and that's blah, 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 and then we're ending it, okay? Okay. And action. That's pretty much uh, the, the fret, the first fret dressing on the ends of the frets. Okay, let's, let's start again. You'll take off your goggles at that point oh, okay. you know, and talk right to camera. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, 
that come up from the from the nice neck there right to you. Hold on a second. Okay, that's pretty much the uh, the end of the uh, take the goggles off. Let's cleaning. Start again. Let's start again. Just take them off and look right to camera. Okay. And action. All right, that's pretty much the end of the fret cleaning up on the ends of the frets. The the dressing of just the ends of the frets after the fret or initial fret job has been done. At this point, you know, I'll take this jig and I'll start siding the neck and make sure the nice the edges are nice and straight uh, this neck is sitting in this jig perfectly straight it's been it's been leveled with a with a notched straight edge and a straight edge uh, the frets are put in here very very evenly uh, so it will take next to no dressing over the tops of these frets uh, but that'll be the next step that we do on this fret dress and and uh, I do uh, uh, up here from about the 15th, 16th fret, if you can imagine an oval right here, I, I will kind of flatten out the tops of these frets in an oval. So when you bend, it's almost like having a bit of a uh, um, uh, the uh, radius that's a compound radius. So I, I kind of cut a compound radius into the tops of the frets. It makes it play much cleaner and when you bend strings you don't hear any any uh, fret buzz and so forth. I like a guitar to play super clean, uh, no fret buzz and so forth. So that's just a little thing that I do when I'm do dressing the frets and it's nothing that the player feels but the, the playing it you feel it. You feel the difference. So, I need to get over there. All right, give me one second. Okay. Cool. Okay. Focus on one and then focus on the other. Oh, yeah, that's really. Right, let me start. <laughs> let me say action. I get to say action, Mike. Okay. And action. All right, so we just finished the initial 
dressing of the ends of the frets after the fret job. And it just so happens that I have the, uh, I made two of these necks and this is the sister neck. So you can see what this neck looks like. Uh, uh, you know, actually this is my guitar that I play all the time. This is my personal guitar. And uh, this is the same neck as that. It was a book matched piece of maple, bird's eye maple. You can see that beautiful edge there. And this is the same fingerboard. It's Coca Bola. This one's been played for a year and a half. So the red is not as red as it was. It's getting dark from the oils in my hands. These, these dots, you can see these dots, they're fossilized walrus tusk dots. And uh, fossil mastodon nut and uh, a fossil walrus string tree. And then this little switch tip right here is the fossil walrus. You can see how pretty that looks. It, they call it uh, uh, tapioca, the center of the walrus tusk. Looks like tapioca pudding. What's that? That's when I get a text message. Oh, okay. So let's bring the headstocks together for me. Mike? Uh, okay. Okay, and let me... And go. Talk about it. Oh. And you can see the headstocks are matching. Yeah. This guitar is uh, uh, being made for a friend uh, that he's got 22 or 23 of our guitars. This is, I think, number 23 right here. And this guitar, the back of this guitar, this is a, a roasted swamp ash body. There is no truss rod in this neck. This is a, a roasted maple neck with a... a Coca Bola fingerboard and no truss rod. This guitar weighs 6.05 pounds. Tell me why it uh, doesn't have a truss rod. Because it's mine. Oh. <laughs> That's why. I, I love the sound of a, a, just a wooden neck, but you got to know what you're doing, and I wouldn't really send a guitar out to somebody without a truss rod, but I would play one myself because if something goes wrong with it, you know, I can call myself and tell myself that, you know, you need to fix it. <laughs> so, but I've never had to, I play 11 to 52 on this guitar and it plays like the day I set it up and it's, you know, this neck is so stable and so stiff that, and then it's got the, uh, it's got our new uh, um, tool steel bridge on it. it. Looks like an old Tele style bridge, but it's machined out of a billet of tool steel and it's, Really phenomenal sounding. Let's see. I need to get this because I just noticed how okay. much crap is on here. <sighs> okay, let me. All right, so front, the whole, whole. Yeah, there we go. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, go. All right, this is our uh, tool steel uh, bridge plate. Uh, this is machined out of a billet of tool steel, so this was just a block of tool steel that we m machined all the metal away to make this bridge plate. Tool steel is the metal that machinists use to make their knives for cutting other metals. And it is the hardest stuff going, and uh, it's very, very difficult to machine, but uh, I found that it made the most amazing sounding bridge. So I go through all the, uh, I jump through the, the hoops to make this bridge, but it's w well worth it. And, uh, and it's got our top compensated titanium saddles. And uh, this allows the strings to uh, maintain their position a lot easier than compensation with angled screws going through uh, the saddles. And then I'll turn this over and you can you can see the titanium ferrules in the back and the titanium neck plate up here. And then we've got our nice open back tuners. Very accurate, really nice.